I'm a visual artist living in Normandy and I just want to say a few things about my experience with Maison Boutou Blanc, with Moeno Wakamatsu and uh, the late uh, Masaki Iwana. Uh, three years ago somebody had given me a, a little flyer, an invitation for uh, le, uh, a festival in Réveillon where uh, Maison Boutou Blanc is located and I I was very intrigued because I've I've known about Bhutto uh, for a long time because of my experience with Japan, but I've never seen an actual uh, dance or uh, an actual performance with dancers. And so I brought uh, a few of my neighbors <laughs> to, uh, to, to witness the, the performance uh, that was happening for a weekend. And I must say that the first time I, I saw uh, the performance of Masaki and Moeno, I was blown away. <laughs> uh, I guess I've never experienced anything that uh, was uh, very deeply moving in a sense that I was brought back to feelings that um, <laughs> that was not equated to any particular thing, just uh, a feeling of being moved by something. And partly, I, I'm still trying to understand what that was or the, what that is. Uh, for example, with Moeno's dance, uh, not just with her movements, but the expression of her face and her whole body, uh, it reminded me of uh, of animals that I love dearly and I guess what I mean with with that is that uh, there is an expression of egolessness which often is uh, yeah it's difficult to find or even replicate uh, in any kind of performance or, or craft including visual arts I find and so that was particularly very moving for me and uh, and so I I went home I went back home with my neighbors and my friends whom were also puzzled by what they saw I asked them what they thought and they said uh, it's just different <laughs> it's just new and so uh, even I guess we we have or most people have a a particular idea of what dance is or the form that it takes and so if this was called dance it wasn't anything that uh, corresponded to most people's idea of dance and so I came back uh, the next day to witness again uh, the performances that they had and uh, again each time uh, and I think I, the dances I went, uh, the performances that I saw later, uh, there is no, uh, it always just moved me. And so uh, at times I was even moved or driven to tears just because of the intensity of the feeling that it aroused in me. I'm still trying to figure out what that is. <laughs> And I joined the performance with the encouragement of, uh, of the workshop, with the encouragement of Moeno the year after. I was just really curious. I have no intention of being a dancer. I never had. But that wasn't really the point I'd realized and discovered in doing the workshops. One of the things I learned about, or just being in the workshops, I, I think it will be an ongoing kind of education or a discovery of, uh, profound things for me for a long time but one of the things that I realized then uh, was uh, that this whole thing about non-thinking or for uh, or just getting into a process where one stops uh, thinking about what one does it's a an ex it's an exercise or a I guess a, a way to being present with oneself, with one's body, with one's life. 
and I've learned this from other spiritual teachings, but here in the actual uh, experience of Bhutto, in that in one of our uh, sessions, I, the experience that I had with that through the body, through the through just uh, thrusting oneself in that moment, uh, it was so concrete, and I've never experienced anything like that before in yoga, in any kind of meditative practice. It was just so instantaneous. And uh, Moenus, uh, I guess you call them instructions, if they could be, uh, guides for us to, you know, to think of, or not to think of, but just to be with when we, you know, get into the the movement. Uh, for me, they were like uh, haikus, Japanese haikus, full of images. Uh, but at the same time, they're also surrealistic because they're impossible to do and you wouldn't know what to do with it. Uh, they reminded me so much of Kenzuburo always, uh, you know, writing in that uh, you don't look or search for meaning, it's just what it is. At the same time, the, there is no point in understanding anything because there's no nothing to understand. So for me, it's just this one thing is a uh, is very perplexing, but at the same time, I think it's it's really uh, incredible how in the movement of the body or our bodies, this uh, kind of complex things become more concrete. And I say that from you know having done uh, other meditative practices in the past. Uh, it's not a comparison, but somehow, uh, I guess, as a visual artist, it's it's something that I've never experienced more uh, concretely and more profoundly. And so, doing Bhutto for me, I hope I can continue to do it. Uh, it's it's like a, an enhancement of some kind of consciousness. Uh, as an artist. I find that uh, practicing or my art practice is, uh, and with the artists that I look up to and uh, whose works I really like, it's not about making objects or making things or uh, realizing conceptual ideas. For me, it's it's a kind of consciousness. It is consciousness. And I find the parallel of that in the dance or in the Bhutto that uh, Moveno uh, continues to uh, to share with us in a Maison Bhutto Blanc. And of course the spirit of Masaki is always there. Somebody I I uh, I feel like uh, I was telling Moveno that having met Masaki just once before he died uh, it's amazing that somebody can can be so present in my life, even though we didn't have much exchange. And I think then that's uh, that's that's so interesting because uh, in normal lives we we give so much weight to words and language, but in fact there's so many things within us through our you know that we carry in our bodies that have much more weight and resonance in terms of how we communicate with each other. And this extends so much in, I guess, uh, living in this world with uh, other sentient beings, other animals and plants. Uh, and I think that's something that I, uh, I guess I, I value more living in the countryside. And so I hope that people will uh, support Maison uh, Bouteau Blanc because it's it's like a, it's like no other thing <laughs> that exists in uh, any kind of community and I feel so lucky to be in the same region where they continue to exist and it's it's so important uh, especially these days to support a place and a community like this. It's no wonder that people gather from all over the world uh, to come and be together for sessions, for workshops with Moeno. Uh, 
her workshops are so exceptional because they're really exercises in being together, in learning together, without or apart from the usual conventions of teaching, which is uh, discovering together and uh, an education that doesn't encourage dualist or oppositional thinking. It's always about everything, all differences are accepted and uh, there's no hierarchy in terms of what people know and don't know, I can't follow, or whatever. And so it's it's an awakening in terms of a, a way to apprehend the world and a way to uh, to learn from each other uh, without competition into realizing who we are profoundly as beings, but also a slow movement which encourages deep listening to ourselves and to others. And I think it's, uh, in a way, uh, it it challenges a lot of uh, the politics uh, that exist in the world at the moment. And so we need this to, to keep our sanity, but at the same time, uh, yeah, to, to make... Uh, uh, a place for all of us, for ourselves, to be able to to live together uh, with a lot of attention and affection. I hope you contribute and support Maison Bouteau Blanc.